We've all heard the old saying, it's fishing, not catching. Well, the Region 2 Fisheries crew has been working for years to improve angler success by creating habitat on our area lakes. We've been doing this for decades, really. I mean, the agency has. We've been putting out specifically these pipe structure attractors that we, that's the design that we, that we use now. We've been putting those out for, I'd say maybe six, seven years. So to, I mean, we've got a bunch of them out right here. There's probably 75 or so out in this area, 75 attractors. So once you throw your buoy out, you just kind of fan cast to different spots. And once you figure out where they're at, you just keep keep throwing to that area and, and just pound it till you keep keep catching fish. But you know the proof is in the pudding. So today, Ted Alferman to and Philip Parsley are going to go out and see what they can catch on some of these fish attractors. Uh, I'm using a uh, Bobby Garland baby shad on a 132nd ounce jig head. There's always a little guesswork with it. Uh, I've got my go-tos, but um, you know, usually you try to have, if there's multiple people in the boat, you try to get people to use different lures and whatever they're Whatever they're biting on, that's what I want to be using. There he is right there. Just like it's supposed to happen. Ain't gonna be close. Oh yeah. I figured yeah. a fish guy could just look at him and tell. Well, I didn't want. I, I, me and me and Philip will make estimates on in millimeters because we always measure in millimeters. But I wasn't gonna say nothing. But I knew he's good. Over the past several years, thousands of fishing structures have been constructed and placed in area lakes. Crews went out and electroshocked on those sites to see how productive these structures are. We've been doing a, a research project, project targeted at determining whether these attractors actually work. You know, we don't want to be putting in fish attractors, spending all the time building them, putting them in if, if it's not working, if they're not attracting fish for anglers. So we set out a couple of years ago, we started first on Old Hickory, electrofishing these specific attractor sites and comparing it to nearby control sites where we didn't have any habitat visible. And, uh, and we, we found that they do in fact work really well and uh, it's worthwhile doing. <laughs> What we've been trying to do lately is put in more in a cluster uh, to create more of like a, a look like a, you know, a tree underwater, just a really tight area with uh, some good interstitial space that the fish can feel like they can hunker down in and hide and also to ambush prey fish. So if I see a fish tractor like that and I know I'm going to fish tractor site, mm -hmm. it's not just right there. That's right, it's not just right there at the buoy. Sometimes you've got to you know, use your electronics, work around the buoy a little bit, and see where they're specifically at. This is just kind of marking the general area. Usually I'll fish these for about 15 minutes or so, and then we move on to the next one. Just kind of keep hopscotching around until we find the one that they're at. So most of the sites that we have on Old Hickory and Percy Priest, and even on Cheatham Reservoir, are all buoyed. But what we've started doing lately is uh, putting out unmarked sites and it, what it does is it it makes it so that you don't have as much of the community hole effect not everybody knows that it's there um, but of course we we don't make these secret we say they're unmarked but they're not a secret uh, all the the gps coordinates are on our website you can go on our website tnwildlife.org and you can um, click on the fishing and boating access link and they all show up on the online gis site so uh, there's no secrets there but um, but it does give anglers an opportunity um, to fish several different spots, some that are marked and some that are unmarked. You ask any angler, you read any fishing report, and part of what's in that fishing report is the depth, and the depth matters, certainly. And so on a lake like Percy Priest, where you have a drawdown up to seven feet in the wintertime, uh, there's certain attractors that come into play at certain times of year as opposed to others and you also have to pay attention to the thermocline. So below the thermocline is where you have 
colder, uh, unoxygenated water in the summertime when it gets hot, uh, the lake stratifies, and up above the thermocline you've got oxygenated warmer water. So uh, that's, those are all things that fishermen and, and fish obviously themselves consider whenever they figure out where they want to be. And so we've also got to adapt and, and have a fish attractor locations that are in different, different depths and uh, different locations, whether that's out on a, a main lake point or back in a cove, things like that. And we're trying to spread those out in a variety of locations so that anglers at any time of the year, or any season, they've got a place where they can go and fish. And while Ted and Philip are chasing crappie, multiple species use these sites. Look at that. I had to fish, right? They clearly <laughs> produce for bass. And what's unique is uh, what we found with our, our research project is that uh, counter to what you really, uh, what an angler would think, in the wintertime is when we really got the best results with these attractors, anywhere from November to, uh, let's say, the first of May. When the water got cold, uh, that's when we started seeing more bass show up on the attractors and more crappie. Now's a great time, and maybe the best time of year, to actually get out here and fish these attractors.